namaste. So before we get into the technical aspects of music, Vedic music or spiritual music, I want to talk about the question, what is spiritual music anyway? And it's very simple from the point of view of the Vedic scriptures. They mentioned that the whole material creation is moving under the three modes or qualities called in Sanskrit gunas. There are three gunas, sattva guna, or the quality of goodness, rajoguna, or the quality of passion, and tamoguna, the quality of ignorance. So everyone and everything is classified by these three gunas according to the mixture. In, in the material world, the gunas are never pure. You never find something that's only sattva guna or raja guna. Usually they're mixed. And according to the proportion of the three gunas, that determines the result. So there's a whole couple of chapters in Bhagavad Gita about the three gunas. So I'm not going to go into great detail here. But let me say that in the field of music, generally melody is considered sattvic or the mode of goodness. And harmony, chords, is considered rajasic or the mode of passion. And rhythm is considered the mode of ignorance. So you have these three aspects of music, melody, harmony, and rhythm. And the result of any particular piece of music is based on which of the three is more prominent, melody, harmony, or rhythm. So if we look at the different types of music in the world, we see some that have a predominant influence of melody. For example, Gregorian chant. Gregorian chant is very beautiful, but it has literally no harmony and very little rhythm. It's all melody. So it's very pure and very good, but its appeal is limited. It's only attractive to those who are in the mood of prayer, bhakti. Similarly, uh, jazz, for example, bebop, is very much into chords, lots and lots of chords, very complex chords and so on. This is in the mode of passion. And of course, jazz, even the word jazz, comes from a black magic tradition in Africa, which is used for seduction and passion, uh, sex magic and like that. So this is passionate music, and it puts people in the mode of passion. They become passionate, and they start doing all kinds of passionate things. And then there's like rap music, which is very heavy on rhythm and almost no melody or harmony. So this is music in the mode of ignorance. You know, it's not that I'm prejudiced, it's just that these categories were established a long time ago and proven by time. There's a wonderful scripture, a very voluminous scripture, called Bharat Natya Shastra. Bharat Natya Shastra deals with the effects of music, art, drama, dance, the visual arts, stage design, costume design. I mean, everything to do with the arts. And it is based on this theory of the three gunas and the theory of rasa that we talked about last time. So that means similar to Ayurveda. Huh? In Ayurveda, you have the three doshas. And 
they represent the three elements, earth, water, fire, and air. Earth and water are kappa. Fire is pitta, and air is vata. So the ideal state of health is one in which the three doshas are balanced. And similarly, the ideal kind of music is one in which the three gunas are balanced. So bear with me here for a minute because this gets a little technical. If music is too much in the mode of goodness, it doesn't have broad appeal. It doesn't have a popular attraction. Like you don't hear Gregorian chant being on the top 10, you know? <laughs> it just doesn't happen. It's an esoteric niche style or interest. So similarly, music which is too much passionate is also a niche thing. There are people who love jazz and there are people who hate jazz. Then there are the music that is very heavily into percussion and rhythm like rock and rap and like that, which appeals to a broad segment of people, but there are people who have very low tastes, very low qualities of intelligence and activity. So to reach a broad audience, music has to have rhythm. To reach intelligent, more intelligent or, and passionate people, it has to have harmony. And to reach the highest people, the godly people, the intellectuals, the really intelligent people, it has to have beautiful melody. So the ideal form of music has all three, melody, harmony, and rhythm, in the right proportion, in a balanced mixture. So this is the secret of Vedic music, why it's so enduringly popular. The Vedic music styles are innumerable, and they're all over, not only India, but the Middle East and even China. So Vedic music principles are based on the balance of these three. And this is why it has its very, really wonderful effect. Now, if someone is into sadhana, they're making a lot of prayers and like that, they may get music in the mode of goodness. That is only melody, no harmony or rhythm or very, very little. Huh? You can argue that even a solo melody has harmony because the, the notes are remembered in the past. And so they make harmony with the notes that are sounding in the present. That's a valid argument. It means there's a little bit of passion. And similarly, the notes, even in a pure melody, have a certain rhythmic value. So there's a little bit of rhythm there. And that's what I mean when I say the modes are always mixed. There's nothing like pure goodness, except maybe just chanting, oh. <laughs> but then, when we add harmony, elements of rhythm come in there too. The chords are held for a certain number of beats and so on. So even in music, which is very passionate, there's some melody. In fact, the jazz music, the melodic players and the jazz solos and improvisations are heroic. I mean, they're just amazing, you know. And then even in music that is mostly rhythm, for example, African drum music, we find that there's a certain melody. The drums are tuned in a certain way or the chants that go along with it have beautiful harmonies and so on. So music has different qualities according to the culture that it comes from. And it's very significant that the Vedic culture has produced the most balanced form of music. And it's also the most long lived style of music going back almost unchanged for thousands of years. So this is an amazing thing which no other culture has. Even classical Western music is no more than 500 years old in its present forms. 
So we have a style of music that is enduring, that has passed the test of time, down through the ages, huh? and has certain salutary effects. And what are those? Because the balance of the three gunas is very beneficial, it's like medicine. It has spiritual, emotional, and physical effects. And if you analyze it, it also has intellectual effects. In fact, in the old days, even as recently as ancient Greece, if a person did not know music, they were not considered to be educated. And that's certainly the case in the Indian tradition, the Vedic tradition, because the first thing you learn when you go to the Gurukula, the spiritual school, is how to chant. Huh? Sanskrit chants. Now these are another thing that are a form of music that is done without uh, harmony or rhythm. But it has its own rhythm, actually, embedded in it. So it's a little bit passionate. <laughs> but this Vedic chant produces amazing results. Anyone who has chanted mantras according to the proper meter can tell you this. I used to be in a spiritual discipline that was very much concerned with mantras. And so I was one of the few people to investigate the matra or the rhythm, proper rhythm of the mantras. And myself and all my students found that when we chanted the mantras according to the proper matra or rhythm, that they had so much more effect. And this is true of all the Vedic mantras, all the Vedic chants. And this is something you should look into if you're chanting a mantra. Um, I'm not going to go into it here, but for example, the Gaya tree mantra has a specific rhythm and intonation. You can look up on YouTube. There are some videos on how to chant Gaya tree in the proper rhythm and, and uh, intonation. And these have a definite effect. So in the same way, when music is balanced among the three modes, when it has beautiful melodies, expressive harmonies, and interesting, powerful rhythms, this means it has the best effect mentally, emotionally, and physically. Music is medicine. Try to understand. Just like, try it for yourself. If you've been watching the news on TV or on the internet, doesn't it make you depressed? Doesn't it give you a whole bunch of problems that you can't solve? Oh, this is going on in Somalia. Oh, this is going on in the, in the elections or politics. Huh? The music that accompanies the news is always bombastic, you know? <laughs> and news deals with tragedy. It deals with problems. It deals with outrage. Oh, this is wrong. Huh? And because of that, it makes us angry. It makes us sad. Just stop watching the news for a while and watch some spiritual videos or videos of nature. And this will completely change the way you feel. After watching videos of nature, you know, like cats cuddling or something like that, you know, really cute and beautiful. Don't you feel elevated? Don't you feel like, oh, this is so beautiful. I guess life is worthwhile after all. Well, similarly, after hearing beautiful music that's perfectly balanced among the three modes, then one feels very, very good. And this also inclines one towards spiritual activities, such as chanting and so on. So you might want to know, how do I make this kind of music that has the best possible effects? And this is exactly what we're going to go over in the next episodes. Aung Tatsat. Aung Shakti Aung.